Do you want to know how to do lesser known lines in Yosemite? We'll even show you how to do your mom in this episode of How Not to Highline. What do you think of your mom? Well, Trina's been bouncing her all day. Sterling's watching his mom get on your mom. Man, when I come off your mom, I get emotional. Your mom's a hard bitch to tame. You go out there, you walk all over your mom, you bounce her real hard. Ugh, a lot of bush to get through to get to your mom. She's a tricky bitch to tame. She can't be settled down, you know? Careful, your mom's gonna slap you in the butt. So I'm about to go into your mom. What do you know? Safety first. Dude, your mom got me trembling. She's scary. Dude, thanks for taking pictures of me on your mom. So in case you haven't figured it out yet, your mom is one of our newer high lines that we recently established in Yosemite. And we're going to show you how to rig your mom in five other lesser known high lines in Yosemite. And by watching this 15 minute video, it could save you 15% or more of wasted time on your next Yosemite trip. That's a insurance commercial joke if you're not from around here. Now we already did a video covering the classics Lost Aerospire, Rostrum, and Taft Point and the rules and how to get around and how to camp in our first Yosemite beta video. So if you haven't seen that yet, stop and go watch that one first. But I want to show you six other high lines that you can do to help alleviate some of the traffic from our most popular areas so we don't have more access issues from rigging the same ones all the time. So you can see the beta for every line we're sharing in this video and the other video on slackademics.com under beta in my section. And these are very detailed beta reports on where and how and how not to rig all these lines. Now your mom is a great alternative to Taft Point. It's out of the way from the large crowds that are at Taft Point. It's got a great view of Upper Yosemite Falls and pretty good view of El Capitan. It is 84 meters long, which is about 33 meters longer than the long classic line at Taft Point, which is 170 feet or 51 meters. So if you want something a little bit longer, out of the way, it's only a kilometer past Taft Point, and Taft Point is only two miles from the road. And it's a relatively easy, flat-ish hike, considering most hikes in Yosemite are pretty burly. Now, technically, you're not far enough away from the road to legally camp. Just throwing that out there. It just happens to be a nice flat spot. And no, we did not put that fire pit there. Now, the limitations of your mom is that you can only do this line around six months out of the year because the road is seasonal. It's on Glacier Point Road, and they don't plow it throughout the winter. And they don't even open it till, like, late May or June sometimes. So... If you're out of season, you're out of luck. When you see El Capitan through the trees for the last time before the trail veers off and you don't see it again, is where you veer off the trail and head over to the anchor. Hi, Katrina. Now, this is important. Once you get to Taft Point, you continue up the Pohono Trail. And if you go too far, you'll end up in the middle of the woods and you won't see any of the cliff at all. And if you turn to go towards the cliff too soon, you'll just get to these other crappy gullies that aren't really worth highlining. So you come up on this gully, little bit of bushwhacking, and here is a beautiful spot that is flat. There's no uh, visitors from the park that congregate here, it's kind of good to be by yourself. The High Line anchors are just right here. These are three fixie triplex bolts with the M12 hangers from Bolt Products, so you can thread your rope directly into there. Yes, that boulder is bomber, and it just goes to the tree right there. And it is about five meters off level and 84 meters long. Now drones are illegal there, so we just use taglines thrown from both sides and then I went down and tied them together to be pulled up and that's how we got the line across. Okay, so I walked down the gully and it, uh, it worked. The gully's pretty steep, feels a little sketchy, but um, 
I made it. So um, I connected the two taglines after they threw it. It's better to throw more into the goalie than further out because it drops so quickly. But you can see here um, that it's pretty steep. Now going up this is a lot easier than, than, than coming down it. But if you throw somewhere in here, it's okay. Um, but if you throw where the anchor is, the anchor is right here, um, especially if it's on the other side of this tree, you can see how it drops. But yeah, you just connect uh, two separate taglines after having them thrown down and tie them together. I'm going to head back up now. Okay, I'm almost back at the top. This is uh, pretty steep. Feels like a 412B. That was a climbing joke in case you don't climb. So that was steep enough that I'm going to, when I go back, take two climbing ropes with me, probably my eight millimeter ropes, nothing big. It's not a full rappel. I probably wouldn't even use a harness or rappel device. It would just be really nice to hang onto a rope when you're going down some of that loose stuff so you don't pull a rock onto your foot while you're trying to hang on. So here is the 84 meter line. I am in the middle of it. Um, one place you can throw the tagline off is these rocks here. And then you would throw it down uh, up into the gully. Um, and then on this side, I believe you can throw it up here or off of this rock. That tree is really nice tree. And um, our 10 meter rope wraps around it twice easily. So we have two ropes on there for redundancy. And it's padded. We left a water bottle over there for if we get thirsty. Um, the view, it's really scary holding my phone out here, but the view is pretty cool. Um, El Capitan slightly hidden behind that, but it depends on what angle you're getting. Uh, direct exposure is, is 100 meters, and obviously it just goes down really steep after that, so perceived is pretty pretty exposed. Taft Point, for reference, is just right there. Yeah, you just hike about a kilometer past that and come over into this gully. Now for our next line, tunnel vision. It is in the, literally in the first tunnel as you drive into the park via Highway 120. It's a long tunnel and in the middle of the long tunnels they have these airways or escape routes, I don't know what they're for. But if you're driving through slowly and you look to your right, you'll see this lit up short tunnel inside. Okay, we just came out of the tunnel and you start hiking right here and you park right here to get to the far side. Once you're at the top, you can access the other side and get your tagline across via a fishing pole is usually how we do it. All of the bolts and all of the beta is on slackademics.com. This is a 120 foot or 35-ish meter line. It is open year round. It is great when it's hot out because you can hang out in that little man tunnel. It's nice and cool in there all the time. Now the winter it's kind of wet and so are all the other rocks around it. But early spring when everything else is closed, it can be a nice option. Now the next line is also open year round and it is at Sierra Point and it's named The Watcher. It is right at the beginning of the Half Dome Trail. The Verna Falls, Nevada Falls, and Half Dome Trail are all the same. You just start at the beginning of the trail, head left up the cliff, and you can get to the top of The Watcher. It's named The Watcher because you can watch the people at the bottom. That means you gotta be pretty careful not to drop rocks and other things because there's people below you. Now this one's challenging because it's rigged all natural. It doesn't need bolts, therefore there are no bolts. But Mitch Jacobs wrote a detailed beta report on how they rigged this line all natural. Now the watcher does have great views of Verna Falls and Nevada Falls. But to get to the other side, it is a little sketchy. You will need ropes for all of that. And this does require quite a few cams. There are trees on the other side that you wrap. They're not very big, so you have to wrap several things. And then this one's pretty unique because you hold up the line with another tree at the master point. You can see all of this on his beta report in detail. And now for the two lines that are in Tuolumne Meadows. There's Icorn Pinnacle, which is on Cathedral Peak, and then there's Mathis Crest. Now both these lines start at the Cathedral Lakes Trailhead. 
And I don't like to take the traditional Cathedral Lake Trail, but to shoot off left and do the climbing trail, which follows the river. And then I go up the descent for the climbers on Cathedral Peak, hop over the lip, and you're practically there at the one side of the Icorn Pinnacle Anchor. Now to rig Icorn Pinnacle, you do have to climb Icorn Pinnacle, which is only a 5.4. It's pretty easy, but it's really, really exposed. And on the tension side, the side everybody's hanging out at, you have a few options. So we rigged it off of this one boulder and another team rigged it off of this bigger boulder closer to the edge. Now when you are on top of Icorn Pinnacle, do not use cams. The little boulder that sits in this bowl shape up there does not like cams. We had our cams come out when it shifted. All you have to do is scorpion wrap, wrap, girth hitch, run ropes around rocks. That's all you have to do up there. And uh, don't tension off of the bolts that are on top of Icorn Pinnacle. Those are for climbers. They get a little sensitive about us using their bolts. So just wrap your stuff and if you need to, back up your tails to those bolts in case you had a major problem. This is a beautiful line, but you do have to remember that you're on top of a mountain. There is often thunder showers in the afternoon. Sleeping on top of Cathedral Peak is not necessarily legal, nor is it logistically easy considering there's no water and very, very few flat spots. One option I recommend is that you start very early from the car, go rig the line, go enjoy the line, but take it down the same day and then hike down to Upper Cathedral Lake, not the lake in the photos, but the one just off to the left from there. Then I recommend that you enjoy that lake the next day, mosey your way on over to the base of Mathis Crest. There is a flat section. If you go between the snow melting and the end of the season, there is water up there. Now, if you miss that narrow season to get water up there, you can always go down to the lake, but it's quite the hike. That's what's so nice about having a rest day is you can take care of stuff like that. Now, if you're gonna go to Mathis Crest straight from the car, don't go down to the lake. You have like 400 feet of elevation loss that's unnecessary. All you have to do is go around the Coxcomb Peak and then you end up at that camping spot I just showed you a lot quicker. Now, I cannot stress enough that logistics for this line are very important. I like to arrive to Tuolumne Meadows, hike in there, camp, and then the next morning wake up at like 2, 3 a.m., get up there by daylight and start the 5-7 climb on the one side and the super easy climb on the other, and then try to be done by the time it starts raining. I have never, ever been up there without an afternoon thunder shower. Not that it's never nice weather, but it's common. You don't really want to start your day at 9 in the morning Anyways, you go up the rock talus and you come up to what the climbers are repelling and you got to go up it. It's eh, five, six at the hardest part. I don't free solo that kind of stuff. I don't climb often enough to do that, but this is all I take for a 200 foot climb. Now that only takes you to the notch. So then you have to climb a five, seven on one side, which I like to be belayed on. Um, some people have free soloed it before. But either way, you got to take a rope up there in order to use as your tagline. And the other side's like a 5-4-D. That's another climbing joke for you, by the way. It's not that hard. There's really no point in having the leader be belayed. But uh, if you are going to go up there and there is a rope that you can fix to the top, it's sure nice to have something to be connected to while you go up it. Once you're up there, that rope you went up there with is your tagline. And then you just pull over your webbing once the anchors are built. Because it takes two ropes to rappel back down to the rock talus, we use one rope fixed to the notch, so we have access down there. And then the other rope is our backup line, so we don't have to take much webbing with us. To build the anchors is pretty straightforward. You wrap things with ropes and you pad them. What you wrap and how you wrap them is entirely up to you. On one side, there is a horn that is bomber and I chose to uh, lasso the big fin behind it as my backup. On the side that we all hang out at, there are lots of options of things to wrap. What I like to do is wrap four individual things individually and then equalize or BFK that. 
Now you don't want any one of those to fail because then everything shifts or you're attached to a rock that's falling down the mountain, but it is a redundant way of rigging all natural. Now the classic line is 120 feet or around 35-ish meters, but if you want to rig an 180 foot line or a 55-ish meter, you can just go across the fin on the other side and rig it to the corner off to the left. So now do you want to know how to rig the half dome line? Well, you're in luck because I made an entire video about it about a year ago. The link to where you can get a permit to climb Half Dome is in the description and in the beta section on slackademics.com. And please, please be careful to go up those cables. More people die going up those cables than climbers do going up the face. Now, I just pulled that fact out of my ass, but I have heard of a lot more people dying on those cables than I've ever heard of people dying on the front, the steep side of Half Dome. So please, please be careful and don't go up there in a lightning storm. Anyways, the quick version on how to rig that line is you wrap rocks in multiple places, equalize it on both sides, and that's it. So check out the video if you want to know what to wrap and how much rope to take. You can get it all from there. There you have it. You have six lines now that you can do to help alleviate some of the traffic from our more popular areas, and some of which you can do when the season is closed for all the others. If you want to share about the lines in your area, please message me about making a beta video. It makes it easier for everyone who's traveling to your area. And remember that we always make this look easier than it really is to do any of these lines. So when you get there, you're gonna have an epic. Therefore, you shouldn't highline.